What if life's biggest storms and hardest seasons are the very things that grow our faith? Alicia Britchley reveals insight on the blessing found, yep, in difficult days. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. The reality of life is that you will walk through difficult seasons, storms, and trials. Many often assume as believers that struggling and pain are a sign of weak faith or sin, but the reality is that God has purpose in those dark nights of the soul. Well, today's guest is here to tell us more about that, but first joining me around the table is my dear friend, Tavlin Ford. Well, I'm excited about today because we often yeah. hear that when you're dealing with sick, you know, sickness or weakness, right, right. that it's your fault. So yeah. I can't wait to hear what our guest mm. brings to the Well, table. yeah, or even if you're walking through a dark season, yes. mm -hmm. that God is with you, and many times he's going to use that. You just can't see it at that moment. Anna Kendall, have you ever walked through a dark I, yes, season? Yes, and I love her colors over uh, here. Yes, she yes I have. We had a season where a tornado hit our house and took the roof off, and we had a prophet come stay with us shortly after that, and I was telling him about it, and he said, Anna, there must be sin in your life. And oh, I no. said, it is an attack of the devil, and that's all there is to it, and we're victorious. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I, yes. would, I would have made him a nonprofit. I, think. <laughs> I, I was, I I was ready, ready to send him away. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rachel Ann Brown, how are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. And you know, film develops in the dark. And I think there's something Ooh, that's so special that's that good. develops in us in yes. those trials and seasons that sometimes can only be developed in, in the yeah. hard, difficult times. And babies are developed in the dark. <laughs> babies are. My baby is growing. It's my is. first show back. I know. I was going to say. Hi, Noah. Little Noah is... Over 10 pounds? 11? He is almost 12. Wow. So, wow. So that's awesome. Freaking that's heart. awesome. Thank you. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, how are you? I'm doing good. And how is little Bo? Boaz and Asher are both doing great. And Boaz is up to what? How many pounds? Oh, I don't even know. He's a little tough. He's, <laughs> he's not like little. 28 pounds or something like that. And he's a year old. He's so cute. I know. And he's, he's walking. And big brother Asher loves him. He does. He's a great big brother. I want to know, does little Bo follow Asher around? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so cute when they start doing that. Asher also yeah. follows Bo around. It's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah. Cindy Murdoch, we remember those days, don't we? Oh, my goodness. Little ones yes. running around our feet. Yes. Yeah. Now we got grandbabies, grandbabies running, running around, around our, our feet. feet. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But you've had a few dark seasons. Really, everyone at this table, I mean, we've experienced some dark seasons. We have. And, you know, I think that we really, this is a lesson we all need to here again, because a lot of times when it's dark, we get hopeless and we want to bolt, mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. And I think about the song, There'll Be Joy in the Morning. Amen. We yeah. can hold on. There'll be joy in the morning. Well, she is an author, speaker, mentor, and former atheist. And she's here to talk about her book, The Night is Normal. Please welcome Alicia Brett Jolie. Welcome. Hi. Oh, so good to have you here oh today. It's an absolute <laughs> joy and honor to be with you all. Thank you. Well, we're just honored to have you. And, you know, you have, I was, we did a program earlier with you, and your voice is just so sweet and kind. And when I read that former atheist, I'm like, yes. what? <laughs> In the world, we do want to talk about your book, The Night is Normal. Mm -hmm. But just can you give us a little quick, if you will, overview sure. of going from being an atheist to finding Jesus? Oh, I'm be happy to. I was a sincere atheist. I truly <laughs> believed there was no God. I wasn't trying to react to any kind of church hurt. I just looked around and it seemed to me that people created God and gods to stuff in the gaps and calm their fears. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was just a realist who preferred unanswered questions over fairy tales. Mm -hmm. That certainty in me just grew over time. And then Jesus 
Jesus, the God who pursues even those who deny him, he interrupted my atheistic worldview with an encounter that was so tangible. Tell me about that real quick. Yes, well, a very persistent woman of God kept asking me to go to church. <laughs> and I love how all you, are you persistent yes. men yes. and women of God? Yes. I love yes. you so much. Yes. Don't give up on that person God's put on your Amen. heart. Keep talking to them because right. one day they're going to say yes and get born again. Yes, just to get you off their back. Yeah. I, and that was the point I came to. She had no answers to any of my questions, but she had persistence. Mm. And it finally occurred to me that she was never going to stop asking me to go to church for the <laughs> rest of my existence. Yeah. She was going to find me and say, honey, it's Saturday night. Will you find a church tomorrow morning? So I told her, I said, I will go once if you promise to never ask me again. Mm. And she said, deal. And so she took me to her little church. It was actually on one of its last weeks, filled with brokenhearted saints. There had been a terrible conflict in the church. The only, only the founding members were left, maybe a couple dozen souls. I sat in the back expecting nothing except to be two hours away from freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and these brokenhearted saints, they stood up and they began to sing, and I don't even know what they sang, because when they lifted their broken-hearted voices with an organ that was out of tune and nothing that was flashy or fancy or wooing, their broken hearts ushered in the presence of Jesus. And wow. for the next hour and a half, I felt like waters, living, living waters open up above me and wash wow. through me. Wow. And I knew that the presence's name was Jesus. You know, um, what I love about that so much is that you know, you had, if you will, that God shaped vacuum on the inside of you and really even a sensitivity uh, to the presence of God, but you had just never been exposed to it. But when you got in that service, and it's like some of you sitting there, right? right? You just haven't been able to change the channel because there, there is a presence here. I mean, that's just coming through the cameras into that room where you're watching, wherever you're watching. And, and God is arresting your heart and saying, hey, I want you to listen to this. I am pursuing you because I love you so very much. And so you encountered that presence. Yes. You didn't know what to do with it. Like, did you walk down the aisle and get oh, no. saved? Or, so tell me what happened. Yeah, no hand raised, no card signed, mm -hmm. no going toward the front. Jesus and I. I just knew I was no longer alone. In the middle of it, I said, all right, Jesus, evidently I was wrong. There is a God, and I know that you are him, and I do not know what the question is that you're asking me. But if you want me, wow. Wow. my answer is yes. And wow. he carried me into faith. I was carried mm -hmm. into faith. And the very first thing that I wanted the very first thing, I, after the whole service was over and the pastor came up, he said, you know something happened to you. I said, I know something happened. <laughs> and I said, I need a Bible. Does somebody have a Bible? Can somebody please get me a Bible? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a book. It was a voice. And I could not get enough of exposing my heart to the voice that pursued me. And where did you start? Oh, the Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, That's John. right, glared at Jesus, gazed at Jesus. Yeah. I just wanted to see what he did and how he interacted with people and what his character was like. I, I was captivated. How did you go from over here to 180 uh, over yes. here? Was, yes. it, was it the presence of God? I mean, did, yes. did you see Jesus or did you, how did you know Jesus? Like yes. people ask me that question. How do you know mm -hmm. it's Jesus and not someone else? How did you know it was Jesus? Yeah. Well, you know, as an atheist, I had studied different world religions to the best of my ability mm -hmm. because I wanted to give everybody equal time in debate. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to pick on Christians just because they were more accessible. Yeah. <laughs> and so on an intellectual level, I would have been open to any name, any religion mm -hmm. when the water started pouring over me. But it sounded inside of me. Yeah. I knew it was, I knew it was Jesus Christ. Mm. I knew it was him. Wow. Yeah. And Super he has natural. captivated me. Alicia, I want you to take a moment. We are going to get into the book. It's so mm -hmm. important. But sometimes you have to have those God moments where you just stop and you speak directly to those that are watching. And I want you to do that right now and talk to that person who is searching, but they don't know what the answer is. Look in the camera and do that. Yes, yes. My friend, God knows you. He is near you. He's not a feeling, so it's okay if you don't feel a thing. But he has been calling your name since you were born. And if you turn toward him and you simply say, all right, God, if you're there, then I am yours. You too will be carried. You will be carried into faith because he's the author 
of faith. It's not something we're drumming up inside of ourselves. He actually breathes it into us and then he stewards it all the way home to his heart. Do not give up. Do not bail. He is nearer than your own breath. I love that. And so for people watching and they don't even know how to pray a little prayer, mm -hmm. what does that sound like? Kind of, can you kind of lead us in a prayer with that person yes. that's watching right now? In simplicity, yes. Jesus, Jesus. I'm yours. I'm yours. You're God. You're God. God. I'm not. I'm not. I've sinned. I've sinned. You're pure. You're pure. And you want me. And you want me. So my answer is yes. So my answer, answer is yes. yes. I will follow. I will follow. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me. All the way home. All the way, All the way home. home. Amen. 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 That was such a beautiful prayer. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I've heard a salvation prayer exactly like that, but it's just that precious. simple. He's waiting for you to say yes. yes. And that's all you have to do. And I tell this, I don't know how many times, and I'll probably keep telling it, and it's okay, but my grandpa just said, God, if you're there, mm -hmm. I need you. And God met him on a Monday morning in a tool and dye mill in Greenville, South Carolina at 19 years of age. It changed his life forever. And he wants to do the same thing for you. You say, well, what do I do beyond that? Well, we have a free book we'd love to send you entitled, Now What? And we'd love to pray with you, encourage you. You don't have to give us any name, address. We're not going to ask you for anything. But if you'd like for someone to pray with you, that's why that number's on the screen. Uh, call and tell somebody, hey, I prayed that prayer. And let us pray with you. And I'm telling you that... Um, God is about to open some doors supernaturally in your life that you've been believing for for a long time, but you haven't been connected to the one who created you, and now everything is about to change. You saw that happen for you. What, nine books later? The night is normal. Everyone goes through dark yes. seasons. Talk a little bit about that, and especially I know you wanted to mention about the disillusionment that comes with that. Why don't you talk about that? Yes. Well, this book is the overflow of 30 years of my life, 30 years of studying the night in the lives of the faithful in the scripture, 30 years of studying the night in the lives of the faithful historically and monitoring it honestly in my own heart. What I started to realize is that the night is something we seem to shun. We keep thinking if we can stack up good behavior, if we can stack up enough worship songs and podcasts yeah. and books, that we can somehow avoid the night. Right. But the night was one of the original residents in Eden. God created it before sin, before drama, mm -hmm. before any crisis. And so walking with God requires day faith and night faith faith. Yeah. And if we can have a theology of night faith, especially this next generation, yeah. if they can have a theology that the night is normal, then the enemy will not be able to derail them so when they start feeling less, mm -hmm. when their prayers aren't answered the way they had hoped, yeah. when God seems distant, but we know he's still closer than their own breath. Mm -hmm. They will have the sturdiness of faith to be able to endure the night and experience the purified love that awaits on the the other side. Talk about the difference between a daytime faith and a nighttime faith. Yes. Well, you know, in the daytime, our faith shines, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. We see clearly. We know fully. <laughs> We're up on well, top of the mountain. To yeah. I know what to do. I yeah. know what's next. Yeah. I know what the next step is. I feel God's presence. And then in the night, well, all of those lights start dimming. I, mm -hmm. I seem to know less things that I was certain about. I'm just not sure anymore. The good feelings I had when I read the word, when I was worshiping, they seem to vaporize. The things that I put my hand to that I thought was in obedience, well, it's not succeeding the way I thought it did. These night seasons, and here's the beauty of it. You know, when we see clearly, we self-lead. Mm. I know what wow. to do, I got it. Tagging with you, God. <laughs> yeah. But in the night, we can't see clearly. And so we lose the illusion of self-leadership. Yeah. And we are able to say, Jesus, I guess following you is my lifetime call mm -hmm. through the day, through the night. Yeah. If I focus on relationship with you, then I'm going to find myself right where I need to be, even if I can't see the steps. Mm -hmm. What are some of the dis disillusionment that you talk about in this? Yes, here? yes. So disillusionment is a word we generally avoid. Ooh, I don't yeah. want that. You yeah. know, surely <laughs> I can avoid mm -hmm. that. No, all that disillusionment is when you break down the word, disillusionment is the losing of false ideas. Mm -hmm. You're dissing false ideas. Mm -hmm. right. And so uh, there is an illustration that I use and I... Uh, it, 
explain throughout the book, mm -hmm. that we begin relationships with almost the substance we might want to call infatuation. You know, everything's beautiful, everything's perfect, yeah. and then it slides into disillusionment where we lose some illusions about how perfect that all is. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we live in a culture that mistakes infatuation for love, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when it slides into disillusionment, we call it failure. Mm -hmm. And when love fails, what does the enemy encourage us to do? Bail. Yeah. Yes. And so we keep bailing in all of our relationships mm -hmm. with God, with each other, even with our own faith. Mm -hmm. But when we start realizing that disillusionment is really, not only is it the losing of false ideas, it's the gaining of truer ideas. Mm -hmm. There is gain in every night. Mm -hmm. Then we can have the strength to be faithful and follow God. There is this upward pull of love in the night. And if we can yield to it, we will find our love for God not only strengthened, but purified. Yeah. So disillusionment is an unexpected friend of spiritual growth. Yeah. I'll just go around the table real quick. Think about a, a night season, if you will. I'll start it in saying that um, I mean, for me, the most recent night season was when my late husband went to be with Jesus. And that was such a black and dark hole for a moment. And, um, you know, I have going on 40 years of ministry, you know, of serving God, loving God and helping build a network that goes around the world. But um, still, that darkness is very, very dark, you know, yes. and you don't totally understand and, but you just, um, you have to get up and remember everything that you've learned in life. And it really comes down to trusting God. I mean, it really does. And not asking the questions because you maybe wouldn't like the answers if God even <laughs> gave it to you. But um, I just want to say that for those of you that have lost a loved one, that um, you can come through this night season and God will walk you through the valley of the shadow of death. And he did that for me and bring you out. And uh, you know what you have to understand is that beyond uh, losing that person, whether it's a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, a friend, a coworker, whoever, um, that beyond it is um, God still has incredible purpose for you and you can never lose sight of that. So let's just take about a minute with each one to Haviland a yeah, dark season. Yes. I mean, recently, uh, two mm -hmm. years ago, I went through a dark season when I lost, I miscarried. And, you know, it's in that time, it's so easy to believe, oh, the enemy's just attacking you. But having to understand that not elevating the enemy, but glorifying God in the middle of it, that God was actually greater to bring me through. And I think that's the question where people can confuse like, oh, this is just, I'm just under attack. How do you know the difference of I'm actually being attacked or this is actually a night season? Because when I came from that night season, the Lord opened up so many new things for me. But if I would have stayed there just kind of with the, oh, it's just the enemy, I would have never gotten there. Well, and isn't so it how both? Do you... is, isn't it both? I mean, it can be an attack from the enemy, but it can also be a night season or it might just be a night season. It might be something that you cost yourself to yes. be in a night season, yes. but you can't really get caught up in the whys, can I you? Know. Now, there can be a lot of different ingredients that can go into creating a night. I mean, we look at Job's example. Job had no clue what was going on. Yeah. In fact, his night began with a spiritual battle in realms that were beyond his sight. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, John the Baptist, his night began and when circumstances changed. It was yeah. you know, one thing to declare Jesus by the cool waters of the Jordan. Yeah. Another thing to not be able to see anything in the midst of a prison. Yeah. So he sent word, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, listen, could you ask Jesus if he's the one I was waiting for or should I wait for somebody else? Or have you forgotten about That's me? That's right. <laughs> I mean, he did exactly. feel that way. Yeah. So circumstances, spiritual yes. warfare. Certainly we see King David creating some of his own nights. Um, yes. Peter, the frailty of our humanity. Yeah. Jesus experienced night too, though. Yeah. Matthew 26, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. overwhelmed with sorrow, yeah. troubled of spirit. If you can let this cup pass. Yeah. That's right, anything. Please right. Let, let the cup it pass. pass. Right. But yeah. nevertheless, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Your, your will. will. Be I mean, that's an important part of, of the, the prayer. Yes. I mean, if you're in the night season, you don't understand it, but you say, nevertheless, God, your will, not my will, but your will be done in the situation. Mm -hmm. Anna? One that, that 
almost destroyed me was when I had a, a little girl born at nine months and she did not survive. Mm -hmm. And it was a stillbirth and I didn't know the Lord. So of course I just went to, you know, all the guilt and all of the shame and everything that was wrong with me. What God, God so restored my husband and I through that though, that we have all kinds of of people who are in their 40s and 50s who see us as their spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers, and they honor us on Mother's Day. And, and I went through that season thinking, I'm just apparently not gonna be a good mother. Well, we didn't have more children. I do have seven grandchildren, one get great grandchild, yeah. and lots of spiritual yeah. children. Yeah. So it's been a blessing. Can't imagine that, can you, as no, she's telling that? Mm -hmm. And like for me, like if I was gonna share a night season, it's definitely been recently, like having a baby knowing that my dad would never mm. meet him. Yeah. And just yesterday... He met him on the other <laughs> side before he came, though. So I mean, Josh that's what, you, that's what you're not understanding. But yes. yesterday, Josh was playing at church, and so I had both boys by myself, and we were watching, and I was feeding the baby, and I was pumping at the same time, feeding him a bottle, and we were listening to Josh and the worship team, and they were doing a song on healing, and every time I hear a song on healing, it's, it grieves my heart a little bit yeah. to know that dad didn't receive the healing that I would have liked. Yeah. And I'm holding Noah, so I start crying, and Judah's like... Mom, why are you crying? And I just said, you know, honey, I miss my dad. And, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, you see, you see his whole face, his countenance changed. Oh, yeah. mommy, he's gone. He's in heaven, which just made me cry even more. Yeah, and, um, he received his perfect healing. But it was really sweet <laughs> because Judah, he, he goes, here, mommy, he goes, wipe your tears with my shirt. And when he realized that his shirt wouldn't reach my eyes, he goes, you need a tissue. So they went <laughs> in the kitchen to try to get a tissue. He couldn't get wow. a tissue. So he yes. got a diaper wipe instead and brought me a diaper <laughs> wipe to dry my tears. I love that. But I think, you know, holding Noah and seeing this precious life, realizing that hope and grief can co coexist. Yeah. You can be so sad good. about what happened, but you can still be hopeful for the future. And so that's kind of the journey I've been walking yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Becca? I would definitely think a major night season that would influence all of my other night seasons was actually for me in college, becoming agnostic, walking away from the mm. faith and kind of questioning everything. Yes. And it was very difficult. But when Jesus showed up and showed me he was real yeah. and I, he began to build that firm foundation. Yes. What's so amazing is that was such a difficult season for me. What's interesting is I would go through much harder night seasons following that, but yet they weren't as difficult because I had him Yes. versus when I didn't have him. I didn't have that established relationship. And so it's so interesting as I think about that verse where Jesus says, if you build your house on like the strong foundation, the storms will come and it won't take the house mm -hmm. down. And I think about when my yeah. dad passed, there was nothing to prepare me for that because there was no indication he was going to pass but because I had built my life on the foundation of him, I was actually more sturdy and more secure than I was at 19 when I was agnostic. And so I would encourage people that if you build your life on him, you can handle the night. That's so good, Cindy. Well, I've had a lot of night seasons, mm -hmm. um, but one that comes to my mind right now is when uh, my son, he was 13 at the time, and he was diagnosed as type one diabetic. And he was so bad that they were. They said, keep him awake till you can get him to the hospital. So that is a night season that oftentimes the sun will come, but then the night of that will try to come back. And those are times when it has to be that intimacy yeah. in that night season to trust God yes. for healing, for his life, for us to see God in that. Yes. And your night season? Oh my goodness, there'd be quite a few. Um, this is my 10th year anniversary as a cancer patient, and we've had three recurrences over the last decade. That has definitely been a night that has shaped not only me, but my children, mm -hmm. our, our family. A special needs mom, we have yeah. um, autism and special needs in our family. There's this undercurrent sometime of ache mm -hmm. as a special needs yes. mom, seeing how your children are treated differently how some of their great dreams, that there's a shadow resting over there. Uh, so many different types of night in ministry and in leadership. Dear Jesus, <laughs> thank you so much for all of the ways in which you've shaped me through my humanity and others' humanity I'll say a big well. amen to that, dear <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Dear yes. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. That was so good. Thank you all for sharing mm -hmm. that. You know, uh, I know that each of those stories uh, would touch those of you that are watching right now. And uh, I don't know what night season that you're in, but I think the one thing that we can take away from all of this is that it's important for you 
to have a personal relationship with the God that loves you so very much. And we all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And yes, you have the promise of everlasting life, but you also have the promise of experience of peace and a companionship that passes all understanding that when you have these night seasons, that you are not alone. He said, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. And it seems so simple, and yet it is, and the gospel is so simple. And the Lord is calling your name today. So again, as you watch this, I know so many of you sense the presence of the Lord right there where you're sitting, and there's a reason that you're watching this right now, and that's because God loves you so very much. Just take about 30 seconds, if you would, Alicia, and pray for those that are watching right now, and especially those that prayed that prayer earlier and received Jesus. Yes. Lord, I lift up these beautiful souls, and Lord, I ask that you would grant them the next, that you would place within their heart that one person they need to call to say, would you help me walk towards truth, that you would place within them that passage in the scriptures that they need to memorize, that you would give them the next step, the truth to hold on to, because Lord, you are the one who has committed to be their light through this life. And I know, God, that you will equip them. They have everything they need and more to follow you, regardless of the circumstances. God, I pray that you would grow within them the truth, that your company is more important than their scenery, that your company is their treasure, and that they would follow that treasure and that light. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And the last thing I want to say is that something we talked about earlier, and you talk about in the book, is that it's so important to forgive. And we all have hurt. We've all been wounded by people that we love, people that are around us, people that have disappointed us, people that have stabbed us in the back. I know what that feels like of recent. But the thing is, you cannot allow unforgiveness to dictate and rule your life. And you said you can have a hurt and a mm-hmm. pain, but you can allow infection. Yes. And so if it stays, then that's what's going to happen. Infection comes, anger comes, retaliation comes, and all kinds of things that are not of God come out from the inside of you. And the answer to that is, again, loving and forgiving. So some of you, I tell you what, that's the first step that you need to make today is as you think about that person, that situation, whatever has gone on, is for you to say, like, I mean, this past week, uh, my husband and I were praying, and I was like, God, I am just giving these people to you. (laughs) And I don't want that anger. I don't want that unforgiveness in my heart. I want you to allow me that opportunity to forgive. And uh, sometimes the people that are closest to you are the ones that can hurt you the most. So remember to forgive, walk in love and forgiveness. And remember, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And at the end of the day, God loves all of us. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that even in the darkest seasons, God is still so very faithful. He has not abandoned you. It's an opportunity to grow deeper in your relationship with him. So I want you to trust in his love and his goodness. If you're watching today and you're facing a difficult season, a dark season, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We love to pray with you. If you do happen to get a voicemail, leave your name and number. I promise a real person will call you back. Sometimes so many people call at one time. We may have 50 people on the phone, but Uh, they'll go to voicemail. So I want you to be encouraged about that as well. And I do want to thank Alicia for joining us at the table. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, The Night is Normal. It's available now. And for more, you can visit her online at aliciasholey.com. As always, let us know how today's talk show has touched your life. If you've been encouraged by the things you've heard, you can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in your life in the days ahead. Thank you so much for watching. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.